I know you can speak about specific details, but um, you know, let's let's move into this topic. And, and yes. you touch upon this a number of times. And speaking about product companies mm. and innovation mm. and things like that. Perhaps we can name the the topic: industrial versus academic research. In yes, some way, that's interesting. Yes. yes. And uh, if I just unpack it a bit uh, and you g- give some context, we we can see that, especially you know, in AI, it's been um, a rather strong trend in recent five ten years to see that, especially in China and US, that people have been moving and there's been like a brain drain from mm. academia into industry, mm. and the majority of research today in AI, at least, is coming from the tech giants. It's from the Google and the Facebook and mm. the Amazons and the Microsofts and Apples of the world and Chinese mm. companies and so forth. And we still have, of course, the universities, um, mm. but they are, you know, challenged by this big mm. brain drain that is happening and, and the big salaries that mm. industry, the, the big tech giants can give them and, and industrial or academic uh, universities cannot. So for one, let me start with a question a bit. Would you agree with that the for one, that the brain drain is happening, uh, in especially US, I guess, and that that is a problem? I think it's happening. Um, I'm not sure how many people are actually transitioning in full from, from academia to companies or if they're just affiliated. Mm-hmm. What I've heard, I, I listen to podcasts, not all of them are true. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one is. But, but um, what I've heard is that the big companies are actually claiming people they pay these them salaries to have their their name on on their rooster uh, just yeah. to prevent boost, other to boost their yeah and to prevent other companies from doing it so they like oh i pay for your your professor professorship or whatever so there is a brain drain i mm-hmm. don't think it's good in the long run because what what they're doing is uh, clearly not beneficial to society if you look at Facebook and and uh, and different. That, that's collectors. a strong statement, though. Yeah. You know, clearly not beneficial for society. But, but uh, is it? I mean, I mean, what what's happening? Uh, would we have had this crisis, or or, or even in even in a, a context like the pandemic, mm-hmm. people are arguing whether things are true or not. Mm-hmm. Where where there is like you have science and you can believe it, and they have their own facts. I mean, where does it come from? Okay, yeah. let's uh, have this topic later. Okay, what would happen with and without Facebook? Uh, I think that's an interesting yeah, yeah. topic. Yeah. But, but, to I, let's, but let's circle back to uh, yeah. research, uh, yeah. industry versus yeah. academic. Uh, how would you approach that topic? Let, let's start from, let's, what's, what's your flying to that mm. topic? If you do the flying. Um, not really sure. I mean, <clears throat> we as researcher most often want the society to, to benef- be beneficial, uh, b- benefit from our research, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but then again, if you find yourself optimizing for for algorithms for ranking for for ads, for instance, and ad clicks, it might not be a good thing. On the other hand, it might be so that the work you're doing on this particular optimization problem actually helps something else, yeah. like drug discovery. You never know. So I I, I think there has has to be a, a, a healthy cooperation between academics and and commercial entities. Yeah, I mean, like we've had the conversation before. I mean, like uh, the classic quote, uh, who, who it is you can name, is, is uh, academic research and AI mm. at all useful or is it a waste of space when we start, you know, publishing papers to hit another metric mm. Of, mm. of a test yeah. set. But, but that's a bit different topic because I think academia is doing it even more than industry, I would say, yeah. in that sense. Um, it's Jeffrey Howard mm. and the, mm. the um, you know, previous president yeah. of Kaggle and now yeah. founder of Fast AI, etc. But if we just think about uh, research in industry versus academia, mm. and we can say that at least a lot of brain learning is happening, and especially in AI, and we can see uh, research is working in some way, for big tech giants, mm, but mm. most other product companies, not so much. Mm. I mean, <clears throat> it's clearly to see that DeepMind and, and what Facebook is doing and others is is rather, you know, it's very basic research in some way, but it's not happening for a lot of other product mm. companies. Mm. And, uh, and f- for me personally, I think, you know, innovation and research in companies is very important and something that we in Europe and Sweden is lagging a bit mm, behind mm. in. Would you agree with that to start yes, with? Yes. Yeah. So then the question is, you know, sh- what should we do? Should we try to improve the, the, the research in academia? I hope so. 
But I think you know the bigger need perhaps is to improve the research in industry. Would you agree? I think I think there has to be an exchange of of. I mean, there the should be the same people in academia and and, and commercial entities. Well, the same collaborative. You, you, you go back and forth. I mean, you shouldn't be in the same company. Or you shouldn't be in academia academia only forever. perhaps forever. So maybe ah, you had to have different views. Mm. I mean, there we are only so many people doing this, and and in in ten years time there will be something else in AI that's more pressing. Um, I don't know gene editing or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so I think I think there has to be an exchange of experience between uh, research and academia, uh, uh, commercial research and academic research. And I think one of the things that is differing is the focus and the definition of done. Mm. So what you deliver in a, a company is something else. It's usually uh, usually uh, something that is going on over time. You have to repeat. I mean, you're, you're you don't really have a happy customer until the second invoice is paid. I mean, they have to be repeated and stuff stuff like that. And that you are freed from doing that in academic research because you do it once. But don't you think you can do that in industry though? Still, yeah, maybe. But I, I mean, okay. So let's let's have it at the focus of industry because you have something that you work for. for mm. in it's a sense. domain. Yeah. It's a fundamental problem yes, yeah. that is relevant for yeah. your P and L. Yeah. And I guess it moved back to one of the topics you said before, you know, what's the difference between science and engineering in mm. some way? Mm. And can you do science in industry? Uh, obviously, you can do science in academia, no mm. question about that. Uh, then you can ask, I guess, can you do engineering in academia? Oh, it's a bit harder, perhaps. <laughs> um, but still, do you have a favorite definition of what is science, what is engineering? Uh, science is what I do, and engineering is what people have to do to make my science work. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. That's arrogant, but uh, I mean, the reason I brought up this 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 distinction is because I don't like it. Mm. People you don't like the distinction. No, oh, because okay. people say, "Well, we are doing science; we're not doing engineering." Yeah. Uh, but what 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 would your science be without the engineering? I mean, if you look like uh, at GPT three, which is a very large language model, mm. which well, it's only engineering to make that work because it has to be sharded across multiple machines. It has to be. Like thousands, yeah, like thousands, and the inference, you know, people. That, that's that's from my point of view as a scientist. That's engineering. But if you're an engineer working with it, th there's no clear cut. Do you think engineering can be science in itself? Yes, I think so. Mm. But I think this is also an interesting topic. Is isn't this actually needing to be symbiotic? Yes. Uh, we, we had on the micro level. Mm. What is the difference with the, with with the, with a data scientist leaning mm. on towards advanced analytics and an ML or AI engineer? Mm. And we started to understand. Well, some someone needs to do the fundamental scientific approach to fix and mo validate the correct model. Mm. Then you need to deploy the model exactly. And 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 respectfully, it's different competences yes, here. Yeah. This is almost software engineering yeah, competence, yeah. and this is actually more mathematical yeah. scientific method. But I think I think there is a purpose to have these kind of different terms: the science and engineering. Mm -hmm. And I think there is a distinction. I, I have a favorite definition mm -hmm. of this. Do you have one, Henrik? Or no, I think this is the symbiotic topic is my idea, and I think they are clearly different. Hmm? Uh, but I, I let's go for your definition. Do you have I, a favorite I one? Or I, well, yeah, I have. Okay, I have one thing: uh, yeah. the agenda. So yeah. as a scientist, you have an agenda. You yeah. want something. You pursue your 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 curiosity to to find something out. Maybe as an engineer, you are fine with following someone else's agenda. You want to make his or her things yeah, actually, work. But actually, the fundamental goal of your ta and your task and your metric is mm. different. Mm. If I take the data scientist, can you optimize and validate what is the optimal model for this? Mm. Where where the engineer will be? How do I code that model in the most Beautiful, pr efficient way to mm. deploy it. Yeah, but I'm not really here to do the you know core modeling. That is someone else's job. Yeah. So for me, this is distinctly two different goals. Oh, that's true. That's true. So let's hear your definition. Yeah, I like short and very concise. Yeah, this is not. I, I, that's <laughs> not me. But sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's clearly an overlap. No question about that. that. But, but I, I think the the, when, the the one big difference is the purpose. Mm. Yeah. So the purpose for science is to build knowledge, mm. the learning aspect, the building knowledge yeah. purpose. Engineering has the clear purpose of building some product. Mm. But to build a product, you need knowledge. <laughs> and to build knowledge, you need products. Mm. So there is an overlap. But the 
big distinction, I would argue, is the purpose. But could we substitute product for system? Then I would be fine because it's yeah. not always product. I mean, if you look at Defend, just yeah. I mean, but the product Semantics. can be a system, <laughs> I, I guess. But but, it, yeah. but but this but is some this is knowledge. This is the optimum model. But how do I put that in operation or, or mm, production mm. product? Mm. Uh, but system is another way of putting something in, into use. Mm. Maybe mm. the engineer puts stuff to use. Uh, you, you, I, I you're hooking, so, uh, your hook is product because there's yeah. different ways of yeah. defining. So, what, what, what I kind of like the idea. Yeah. I like the definition of it. And I, I think the, the things we're talking about, engineers and science, are, are you know long long established terms. But now we're looking at ML ops, uh, AI yeah. ops, <laughs> DevOps. Exactly like and this, right? these are terms or, or job titles that didn't exist four or five years ago. Mm. So I, I, I'm reading a book. I don't remember the name exactly. It's it's something with um, design patterns for machine learning. Mm -hmm. uh, there is actually a book on it says, well, here's here's the different roles. Uh, and there's a nice graph of that. And it says that if you're a scientist, this book is not for you. And so it's actually how do you do a feature engineering? How do you do rolling deployment? How do you mm -hmm. do so that there, I think there are 30 recipes on uh, there's a it's a Google book. Uh, it is an engineering book. Uh, more or less. Yeah. I, I, and I me as a, as a more or less scientist, I really enjoy reading it and see, OK, so this is what you can do. This is how you can represent, you know, and and this. and but and this topic, of course, we can do this in a, in a philosophical way. But it is actually a huge topic if you go to a large uh, traditional enterprise that are mm. trying to recruit and balance a team and try to understand what they really need to hire. Mm. Because ultimately, if you hire the data scientist, he is here to figure out which model is the optimum model and validate and have that reliable and mm. all that. And maybe they need one of those guys, but they, they kind of need more engineers mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, and they don't really understand the distinction of this. Mm -hmm. So I think this is quite important when you start thinking about going in this journey and scaling this and operationalizing mm -hmm. AI uh, okay. to understand the difference. So, so what the, the, um, if we try to close this topic a bit, but what's the um, utopian kind of future where we have uh, industrial and I hope academic research working in harmony in some way? Where do you see the biggest, biggest investments that we need to do if you were to speak to some politician, for example, and say, you know, That's we need one. to fix this to make Swedish mm. research in general work mm. better? Well, I think, uh, well, how should I put this? Someone dropped the ball in, in the government looking at how WASP, the Wallenberg uh, Foundation, is actually funding the biggest uh, you know leap into ai in sweden it's a private entity it's yeah. not the government yeah. so i think they dropped it they uh, someone should pay for academics to do academic research and be aware of that it has to be free and it has to be allowed to cost money right. of course they have to balance it f for everything else that uh, people want yeah i think that's really well put i think uh, and you know of course, we want the research in, a, in industry, but it's going to be a bit more biased in yes, industry yes. because it has a clear purpose of serving the you know, business model that the industry has. Yeah, and, and, and the business, they're there for their shareholders uh, in order to make money. Yeah. To put it and, and that's okay mm. in, in many senses. And, and I think you know, research in industry in that way can be really, really useful. Mm. And we've seen that in, in Google and Facebook mm. and uh, in China, even Chinese companies, yes. I would argue. Yes. But I think there is a big need for academic research as well, mm. and especially being not dependent on mm. the business values that otherwise are there. Right? You, could, you could put it like this. Academic research wouldn't have come this far unless there had been like the commercial entities as well. I mean, BERT, yeah. for instance, and all the transformer things. And exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a bit unfortunate that actually what's driving research in AI, at least, is the industrial aspect of mm. it, not really the academic. Uh, I know people are, would argue me on that, but I actually think it's yeah. true. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I, I agree. So I, but I see it's like a leapfrogging. Uh, so maybe mm. academics will take over, uh, take over, whatever that means. But they had mm. the, now, now the industry leapfrogged and now gearing up and then we hope uh, the, the academia will take the next leapfrog mm, exactly much push like, each other much much like data and algorithms i mean algorithms algorithms were the cool things were the secret things and now every everything is open because the people re releasing the algorithms know that the data is not there for for other people to actually monetize on the on the models